wonderful to uh, have the pleasure of the company of Miss Indian Cricket, as I often call her, Mithali Raj. Thank you so much for taking your time out and speaking to me on this very special episode of the RK Show. How are things for you personally? How are you looking ahead to the rest of 2020 and 2021, which is going to be a very important year for you? Well, um, it has been quite a while that I have played the last one day format way back last year in November. And uh, with the, you know, the current situation, there's not m much of activity go has been happening since two, three months. So uh, we just started with a little ease in the lockdown. I started to go to the ground and start my physical training. Uh, yet to start my um, skill work. But I think slowly, um, you know, by August, we should be regroup as a team uh, and start our preparation for the future uh, tournaments. And... Um, Yes, as, as on today, my goal definitely is 2021 World Cup. That is what I'm aiming at. And um, I'm trying to uh, work on my game so that I prepare myself well before I get into that World Cup. Uh, that definitely is going to be my uh, last World Cup in terms of the World Cup that I'm talking. Not necessarily, um, you know, I'm talking here about my retirement. But um, since it's going to be my last shot at the World Cup, twice we've been very unlucky, closer to the Cup. Never got to get my hands on the cup. But this time around, I'm trying to put in everything that I could to make it a uh, more significant uh, World Cup for me and probably even for India. Interesting that you say that uh, because, yes, I mean, you've stated what has happened over the past couple of World Cups in terms of India getting so near yet so far. But Mithali, I mean, you've obviously got the experience, no two ways about it. But sometimes, get that put added pressure on you? Because, I mean, you did talk about giving your very, very best shot. And how do you differentiate between that added pressure and probably enjoying that moment of your final World Cup? Well, um, every World Cup has its expectations and there will be pressure for every cricketer, no matter how much experience you get to the plate. But the thing is, uh, when you prepare well, you go in with a lot of confidence that you've done your preparation and it, it, all it matters is that you compose yourself on that given day and give your best shot. Um, if I have to play with the pressure, then maybe I am uh, kind of loading myself more and probably not be able to be in the best frame of mind to give my best. So, I will not uh, keep telling myself that this is my last World Cup, but I definitely will go in with a lot of confidence to make or probably create opportunities where I, I know that I can excel and the team can do much better in the World Cup. Uh Obviously, I mean, staying put at 2020, looking ahead to 2021, there is enough and more motivation to play to the next World Cup, but the next World Cup rather. But over the years, or, or during the course of this time probably, when everything seems to be in a lull, how is it for a sportsman or a sportswoman to keep that motivation going, to keep that fire burning inside? Well, I think the, uh, the biggest fear any any athlete can have is uncertainty or the future is very uncertain for us. Uh, that is what I personally also felt in this uh, lockdown because uh, th the first thought was definitely whether the World Cup is going to happen next year or will it get postponed like the Olympics. So nothing was very clear. But uh, with the days passing by, getting some routine in, in the fixture and trying to uh, you know, keep yourself motivated to train each and every day irrespective of whether you are limited or confined to your houses. Uh, it, it is very difficult, but I think um, something as an athlete and as a, as a person, I'm eternal optimistic that things will get better. This is also a phase and uh, we just have to hold on to uh, our self-motivation that we call and uh, continue to train. A good vibe among the cricketers because for us, ultimately, it is how, how well we train ourselves and get to play. That is the most important thing. And um, it was a little difficult in the initial period when it comes to the lockdown. Uh, but I think uh, getting some routine uh, and getting uh, some perspective in place has helped me to get through the lockdown. Uh, this show is a lot more about uh, Mithali Raj, the person. And therefore, I mean, after having spoken to you about the current scenario and what holds in store for you in 2021, would want to take you back in time to understand the persona that is Mithali Raj. 
we, we often see you or we do see you as a very calm and a collected individual, Mithali. And we see you reading a lot of books as well, Rumi Quotes being one of your, your favorites. Now, is this gradually cultivated over the years through experience or have you always been like that growing up as a young kid? Well, no, I, I, I don't think that I've had this habit of reading as a, as a young kid. But uh, most of my seniors uh, in railways, uh, they had the habit of reading. So usually when I'm hanging out with them as a, uh, you know, as a youngster, uh, that is one of the habits that I inculcated, probably uh, took from them, uh, reading their books. And also, well, uh, when we, I've done a lot of travel by train. So sometimes it is like more than 24 hours traveling from Hyderabad to Delhi. Uh, a lot of times I was traveling alone. So books are pretty much the best companion that you can have on journeys. So that's how I developed that habit. And, uh, you know, naturally I, I took it to the ground because uh, there were times when, you know, I padded up and waiting for my turn to bat and the openers used to play literally 25 to 30 overs. So what do you do for 20, 30 overs padded up? So I like, okay, let me at least read a book. So that keeps my... Uh, uh, you know, it, it maintains my composure. I don't develop that anxiety of, you know, what would happen if, when I go into bat sort of thing. And that really helped me. So, yeah. yeah di di different batters have got different kinds of preparation, isn't it? Some would want to keep watching at the game. Some would want to do their routines per se. Some might not even yeah. want to do anything. And therefore, this comes through as a very interesting facet. Because I, I remember, I mean, just seeing somebody like Mark Ward during domestic games. I mean, he's somebody who loves reading a book, doesn't necessarily like watching what is transpiring there. But the kind of books that you read, uh, is, is there a genre that you prefer? Because uh, philosophical books, uh, poems, uh, something that I've seen from a distance that you actively uh, involve yourself in. Uh, is that the genre that you invariably look at? Well, um, my personal favorite genre is fantasy. As okay. far as Rumi is concerned, that was a book which was given to me by the fielding coach because I ran out of books in the World Cup. So okay. uh, I was like asking people like, do you have a spare book that I can read? So he gave me this book and when he, I'm, I'm literally not into poems. I've never read any, but uh, the first time when I read, I just didn't understand any of it. So I, I returned it back to him saying that, you know, I just can't understand. So then he told me like, you read two, three times, you will get a hang of it. So that's when I started to read and uh, I enjoyed it in that phase, but that was that. I think I enjoy reading more of fantasy, yes. Oh, interesting. When it, when it comes to fantasy, what are, what are the kind of books? Who are the authors? What are the books? Well, I've enjoyed reading the Shadow series. That's one of my favorite by Lila, Lila Bound. And um, I've read, uh, of course, Lord of the Rings. I mean, everybody enjoys reading that. Um, and um, what else? I think... Uh, I guess I've read, I've also uh, started to read Shadow Hunters. That's also a book. It's a series. Uh, they've also have a Netflix, I think, or a Prime Video. They have uh, a series yeah. on that. And uh, the Shannara Chronicles. I'm trying to get my hand on those books as well. Interesting. But also would want to dive a little bit deeper into your, your family. So you, you stay with your parents. I know your father has been a huge influence on your cricketing yeah. career from your early days. But tell us the involvement of your mother. Uh, I mean, how much of an influence has she been on your career, on you as a person? Well, um, see, uh, of course, it was my dad's choice or probably my dad wanted me to... Uh, play cricket more seriously as a, as a career option. But my mother was more uh, towards, she was more inclined that I turn into a dancer, a classical dancer, because I've learned Bharatanatyam for good seven, eight years. Um, so uh, she wanted me to be a dancer. And, but then when I chose cricket, she never really um, felt bad about it, but she kind of uh, uh, supported me a lot in my choice of, uh, or the decisions that I made uh, through my career as a cricketer and um, there were times uh, obviously she being a woman she really didn't understand the sport as much so uh, there were times when you know I would feel low because of not getting runs or lack of form um, I would say politics in the game or in the team uh, selection matters and stuff like that so I always used to come and share my thoughts with her and I always got this quite nice feedback from her which really helped me to uh, 
get through that phase, that low phase that one says during their career. And uh, she's been a great support for me. And it was important because when I started playing cricket in 90s, uh, it was very difficult for a leave alone playing cricket for a girl. But sport itself was a, was not a career option uh, for many girls in our country. So at that point of time, it was important as a girl, if I was stepping into cricket, to have the support of my parents. And um, she she was a working woman and she had to quit her job to see that, you know, she uh, she's there at home to take care of me whenever I came back from tournaments. So I, I guess somewhere uh, she let go her career to see that, you know, my career prospers. Let me move on to the other aspect. I mean, you spoke about how difficult it was during your early days. And, and therefore, in comparison to where we are now, uh, the cricketers that are coming through, I wouldn't say are having it uh, easy. That's definitely not the right word. But just the environment through which they are coming through, a lot, lot better. Uh, if, if, if yes, what has helped them? What has helped the environment? Well, uh I think there is a lot more, I, I would say, a professional touch to everything that we do. Like, like say, whether, whether it is logistics, uh, training, there is a systematic way of training. You have experts for every skill that you have, whether it's bowling, you have a bowling coach, you have a fielding coach. So each and every department of your skill is very looked after by an expert there in the team. And you also have a masseur, you have a trainer and a physio who can work on your physical uh, activity, your training, your fitness. So I guess today's players, of course, as you said, they do have their own challenges. Every generation has their own challenges. But uh, a lot more has become easier for them in terms of the society or people perceiving women cricketers, watching women's cricket. The standard of women's cricket has grown compared to uh, what it was earlier. The number of matches in a year that we play is much, much better than what we did last year, a few years back. And um, central contract, I think that is the biggest change. Because uh, at one point, we were literally not earning anything from playing women's cricket, leave alone uh, playing for India. I mean, cricket, women's cricket had no money, absolutely. And today, we are all centrally contracted player by BCCI. We are looked after by the board. So that really helps to those players who come from interiors of our country, who where the whole family depends on, on that person. So when you're a centrally contracted player, the player can actually look into extending the career. Uh, they can also take care of their family with the, with the money that, that they earn playing professionally for the country, for the state. And uh, I think that really helps because way back in 90s, a lot many players were very good and talented. But after 22, what is next? Because ultimately your parents would want you to be independent, start earning or do a job. So if you're not earning through this career, then you know a lot of them just faded away because they have to choose another option where you know they can earn money. So I think that is not the case here. I mean, a lot of players now can extend their career. A lot of young girls look up to them as role models. When we were growing up, for us, cricket was what we got to see was only men's cricket. So our role models are effectively all male cricketers, you know. But today's girls, they can actually see a woman cricketer and they can look up to them and say, okay, she's my role model. So I think that is also a big change to what it was. Uh, is, is it just the right time for uh, the women's edition of IPL on a grander scale? Because we are seeing the Big Bash League the kind of success that is, it's experiencing. And therefore, is it just about the right time to look at that picture? Honestly, uh, if you ever asked me this question like two, three years back, I still would be hesitant to have a women's IPL. But now with this year's uh, T20 World Cup where India was a finalist, I think now is a good time to actually have an IPL, if not in a full-fledged, but maybe with few, few, uh, few teams taken by the franchise, maybe four or five teams, and you can have relaxed few rules because it's the first time that you're going to conduct uh, an IPL sort of a thing for women in India. So I think with these things, you can actually start a women's IPL and see how it goes. Maybe in two, three years' time, you can increase the teams and change the rules. But I think, yes, it is time that we start something like that because a lot of young girls, like, uh, say, Shefali is a... I always give her examples because she is the find of the challenges trophies, what we call in the last two years, 
which has been happening, uh, which which is pretty much what BCC has been doing, the Challengers Trophy, and she was a fan of that, and that is how the selectors and we also got to see the talent that she has, and she was picked for the T20 World Cup. So if we don't have a tournament like this mid year, most of the players are only banking on domestic season. And what if a player, good uh, quality player, misses out on domestic season for whatever factors? She cannot actually look for another opportunity throughout throughout the year. So I think it's important that IPL does take place. Maybe it, if not this year, maybe next year or the following year. But it should start small and. Uh, uh, the interaction that the young kids, the domestic players, get to interact with the foreign players, the international players, naturally things will start to roll, and it will only help our domestic standard to improve. And um, the second string also, uh, the pool of players that we can have for the India will increase rather than now where we are only banking on like good twenty players, and we don't have uh, beyond that. So that thing will uh, probably will not happen once we have IPL. As a, as a senior player, as, as somebody who's been around the circuit for a long, long time, have you been in talks with the BCCI in terms of suggesting that it should happen? And you also spoke about a few rules or a relaxed set of rules. Could you just uh, explain a bit more on what you meant by that? Well, see, uh, it, it is very obvious that you know we don't have too many um, quality players in terms of domestic. You know, uh, sure. we do have said good twenty-five players, but beyond twenty-five players, uh, you might find the difference when you watch them play against the uh, Indian Indian players. So there is a lot of uh, difference in the standard, which would be very obvious when you see on television. So if if you have good twenty-five players and then you add foreign players, you may not have you may not go beyond three teams, three or four teams. Sure. So if you relax the rules and add maybe. Five foreign players to start with, you know, and have good quality domestic players, and maybe four or five teams. Then maybe you know, once the pool of players increases, once the standard increases, then you can you can change, get it back to say having four foreign or uh, overseas players in the team. So that way, I was I was, uh, you know, trying to say about relaxing the rules, and um, well. Uh, I think this year itself, BCC was supposed to increase, add one more team to the challengers, uh, make it four teams and maybe a league because they saw the kind of feedback that we got last year uh, in the finals. A lot of people turned up to the stadium and the viewership was very good. So they were planning to add. But I think it is just not about BCC taking the initiative. At some level, we would definitely want the franchises to come in because IPL is more about franchises and we would want them to take this initiative. When the world is talking more about women empowerment, I think this is the right time to actually come forward, support the women's team, start a league, and then see how it grows. I mean, how did that feel, and how was that experience just being a part of your life during your lifetime, so to speak? Well, honestly, one is I'm not a movie buff. I don't watch movies, and I I never expected that there would be a movie on my story. uh it, it is something out of the blue like you know it, it came as a joke like i asked my manager a lot of times i said i hope you're not playing a prank on me that you know there is a the people are interested to do a movie on my journey as a cricketer so she was like she literally had to swear on her parents to say that okay actually it is the truth they are they are keen to uh, do a movie and so uh, i i think it's a great um Uh, way and a medium to put across the journey of a woman cricketer in our country uh, i am in a position to express it in a much better way with uh, pre and post bcci i would say because i've also been part of that association wcai women's cricket association of india before we came under bcci so i can understand or relate to a lot of ex cricketers Uh, who've gone through the challenges and uh, the tough times that they have endured as a woman cricketer way back in 90s and to today's generation where things things are far better much easier for a lot of young girls to take up cricket a lot of has changed so that the, the transformation women's cricket has gone through in india under the under bcci from wci i think i would be able to put it far better with my uh, uh career you know and i think uh, 
and it will also see that you know we can inspire more young girls uh, to dream big to dream to play for india and I, i guess no other better medium than a movie i feel mm. interesting that you said that you're not a movie buff at all and you you were extremely modest i thought when you uh, you you're honestly modest so to speak uh, when when you spoke about the fact that you never imagined that somebody will make a, a movie around your life but how was that first meeting how were the first couple of meetings with the with 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 the people from bollywood maybe with tapsi well with tapsi i think we met before the photo shoot of the uh, movie and uh, we are two different personalities like literally i'm i'm quiet i take my time to interact and she is very chirpy she is she keeps talking and then you know she said it takes a lot uh, to get mitali talking she said i said give me some time i i take time to open up so i guess it it works very well because you know we are we are, she's doing my role but at the same time we are very two different uh, personalities and um, i did tell her i said uh, acting is your skill i mean you you're good at it but the one challenging thing would be to uh, you know ape my cover drive because that's what people relate me to i mean a lot of people know that in you know, i play a good cover drive so you have to get that right so i put a sort of um, uh, i would say that um, you know i try to pull her leg saying that you know that is very difficult you better start batting so she's like i will work very hard i said yeah you should work hard and uh, I, i guess she got it very right in terms of the picture because with the floppy hat and everything yeah. uh, uh, and and also that you know because she has couple of experience with um, doing sports film like i've seen her do a hockey movie uh surma i think so i guess uh, she she's naturally adapt to us athletes way of life and uh, that probably will help her and on a personal note i mean where do you see uh, yourself in say a few years time i know you spoke about the fact that 2021 that's your final world cup but it's not that you're going to retire after that you will play cricket yeah. for a while but going further down the road Uh, is there is there a plan that you've chalked out for yourself uh, mithali in terms of the way you would want to see yourself well um i don't know i'm not um, a lot of people ask me this this is the question which is quite regular in all the interviews and i should say that you know i've not really given it a thought maybe uh, something to do in terms of mentorship or uh, in in terms of say administration i don't know whichever avenue opens up and which i feel that you know i'm i'm ready to take up that role i will definitely give it a thought but uh, yeah so there is nothing uh, nothing that i have zeroed it on yet fair enough fair enough uh, mithali you've been wonderful actually for having taken your time out and speaking to me right here but just that one final part of this interview which i call real quick with rk so it's going to be rapid fire questions to you Uh, so it got to be real quick obviously in terms of answering those are you good to go no i am i'm quite stressed when it comes to rapid fire <laughs> <I'm straight> <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fairly straight forward fairly straight forward yeah okay. right okay uh, your favorite food fish fry okay uh, favorite uh, kind of music peppy anything which uh, which motivates me could be anything oh, oh, okay peppy is it okay interesting so i thought i mean you might relate to rumi and then you might go into some no, other things i told you no. i that was one okay. <laughs> okay 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 fine right uh, uh you said you're not a movie buff just a while earlier but i'll still go ahead and ask it uh, any favorite movie um i think lord of the rings okay and uh, and also 36 chambers the uh, 36 chambers of shalin it's a martial art movie yeah yeah and of course don't think yeah. not not that i am going to i'm going to be a martial art i'm going to learn anything of that but it's just that my coach used to teach me uh, uh, used to show me a lot of these movies to huh. uh, you know show that how uh, how you train how hard you can train or how creative training can help you in your skill so and and the, the importance of discipline Oh, very interesting very interesting right uh, any sport that you watch or play besides cricket none for oh, none is none it? at you, all you, you don't watch any other sport as well on tv or something no i don't watch any other sport oh wow okay uh, favorite yeah. athlete of all time mithali for you michael jordan okay uh, 
the best line of advice that you've ever received? Uh, there are so, so many advices people give me that uh, I don't know. Uh, no, from people that matter to you. I, I know, I mean, everybody who un remotely understands cricket will also try and tell you how to play this shot or that shot. But I mean, from well, people I that really uh, matter. I would say that a, a friend of mine who's, who's also sort of a mentor to me, a lot of times as a captain, you are always on the crossroads. A lot of decisions that you need to take sometimes is very difficult and uh, times which even confusing her. So I guess uh, there was a point when I asked her uh, what, what to do. She always told me no matter how difficult it is, always do the right thing. Your consciousness should be to do the right thing even if, if even if you have to be all alone standing with that decision, stand up for it. So um, that was uh, quite a uh, quite an advice which really hit me, you know. And I've always tried to do it, though it is very difficult. I must admit, a lot of times it is very difficult to do the right thing. Um, but uh, when you take that decision, there is nothing like it. You know, you you know that you've do, you've done your best. Best friends in that Indian dressing room. Well, I don't have any best friends in the current team, but um, uh, Amita and Nushin have been my best friends. Okay. Uh, best friends in the world of sport overall? I mean, uh, other, other sporting personalities that you might have interacted or spoken to? No. No? Okay. Uh, no. If you had a magic wand, Mithali, what's the one thing that you would want to change with respect to things around you? I would... Um, I would change the way people compare comparisons in every field, whether it, uh, I mean, not necessarily uh, cricket or athlete uh, or sport, but uh, comparisons generally in life. I mean, I see a lot of people for every even day to day talks has a lot of comparisons in everything, whether it's politics, media, interviews, everything. So a lot of people give performance as a criteria for one's success. And I don't believe in that truly. I think that every day people get up and go on work that itself is a success because a lot of people struggle. And I, I still feel I'm privileged to have a life that I had. Of course, I had my challenges, but day-to-day uh, -day challenges are also equally important that everybody goes through it and that itself is a success. And uh, yeah, that is something I would like to change. I would like to change the fact that people should not relate success only to performance, but even an average person, common person can be successful in their own lives, in their own capacity. Wonderful. Wonderful. Just about the right time for me to thank you. Mithali, thank you seriously for taking your time out, for being so patient over... Uh, the internet fluctuation, so to speak, uh, yeah. to speak to me. <laughs> really appreciate your time. Thank you once again for joining.